So I looked out the window and I thought, I can do this all the time. I can do this in the future. It'll save my life. Not only am I a kid, you know, scribbling on his desk at home. I can actually think about this seriously, just like other kids have got out of their hometowns by playing guitars. And that really focused me. It really saved my life. It gave me a sense of purpose and direction and a, and a way out of... Of course, what I was going to write about, I wasn't really sure. But then it, be, it began to occur to me that I could write about, let's call it my own situation, about race, about my father being an Indian, marrying a white woman living in the suburbs, growing up in the 60s, race, racism, you know how, all that stuff. That was a good start. So I started to sit down and I wrote, mostly in the evening when I got home from school, but all the kids that I knew were into fashion. You know, clothes, dressing up, they'd started taking photographs. It was very, very creative. Although we hated it and called it dead, when you look back on it, the end of the 60s, it was really lively down there. But I was the only one who wanted to be a writer. They all thought that being an obvious was a bit old fashioned, you know. But that's what I was good at, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, and that's what I thought I could be exceptional at. I was taken to a publisher called Anthony Blonde when I was about 15. Uh, and there was an editor there called Jeremy Trafford who used to come down to my he was a teacher and a very, very kind man, very clever man. And he would come to, down to my house on Sundays all the way from Earl's Court where he lived. And he would go through my writing with me. And Jeremy was an influence on me because he took my writing seriously. And that really helped to be taken seriously. And he would go through my stuff with a pencil. And we'd have long conversations on the phone. And he was very interested in character. And that helped me a lot. He said, write the characters. People like the characters. It's the characters that make the books. Uh, and then when I was 18, I went to work at the Royal Court Theatre. Which again, I was young, but it was a... That's when life really started for me. So it made me think, made me aware that you could be an artist that could be communal. It could be a collaboration. But when you start to write, you write for yourself. I write for myself. I mean, I, what I mean is I look at a sentence, I look, look at a paragraph, I look at a page, and then I'd say, is that all right? And that's according to, obviously, to my own judgment. You know, do I like that? Does, does that sound like Hanif, does that sound like me? Is that how I want it to look like? Um, and then you show it to other people. I like writing. I still do it. I mean, you, you may be inspired by somebody else, but in the end, you do it because you're really fascinated by it. The other day, I was walking up my street and the guy on a motorbike came up beside me and he stopped and he took his helmet off and got off his bike and all that. And he said to me, when I was a kid, I loved, a young Asian kid, he said, I love your books and your films and stuff when, when I was young. And I thought, well, that's why, that's why I did it. I did it for you, for that, for that moment, for him. You don't know who's out there with books. I mean, when I began to, first began to write, there weren't really any stories about mixed race kids. And all the books you read were by posh people. The world feeds my writing. 
um, you know, I grew up at the end of the 50s, through the 60s, through the 70s, through the 80s, 90s. God almighty, it's been a long time. But I'm really interested in the times. I'm interested in race. I'm interested in creativity and music, sexuality, politics, class. The world feeds me. So I'm inspired by what's around me. Then I'm inspired by what happens to me, who I'm living with, what my kids are doing, what age they are, what's it like to be a kid, what my friends are doing, what they're thinking about. The world still interests me more and more. I mean, we live in a very public world, a world of the news. And we live in a public world of big events, particularly recently because social media and it's so relentless. But what I'm interested in is an individual in a public world. So you may or may not want to talk about racism, but I want to talk about that person. Um, obviously interested in racism as, as an idea, but I'd look for an individual in a world and how they do or don't cope with it. And psychoanalysis always looks at the individual. And so psychoanalysis and literature have the same scope, really. And literature has the same idea, which is to take this particular person in this particular world and see how the world is, let's say, lived out through them. It's just practice. You write and write and write and write and write and then you look at, through it and you might see a bit of this and a bit of that that's, that's a bit lively. A lot of it will be nonsense or rubbish. But you know, the process of writing is writing a lot and then finding a little bit, you're panning for gold. What makes a good writer? Um, that's a really tricky question. Whether they turn you on, whether they interest you, that's all. Whether they, you feel that they have a view of the world that hooks you. I mean, I, I teach writing, creative writing as it's called. I don't know why it's called creative writing, but it's just writing really, isn't it? Um, and you turn the pages of your students' work and you just look for something that Think, oh, that's good. I'm interested in that. That turns you on, gets you going. There's something about their view of the world that's unique or, or really it's liveliness. There's something alive about it. Something you didn't know before, or hadn't heard about before, and suddenly you think, I want to be in that world. It's intangible. It's magic, really.